Hello everyone, I'm back, and today we are going to talk about the new Blood Angels Combat Patrol box set. Since this one replaces the old one, the old one goes to the way of the dodo. But let's check out, the new successor can uphold to the old great Combat Patrol box set, which was one of the best. But now let's check out this box set. This box set costs 100 pounds or 130 euros or 168 dollars. What does this box set contains? It contains one captain, which you can build as a captain or a Blood Angels captain. It is almost the same, but with different weapons. Other than that, it contains six Sanguinary Guards, the Elite of the Elite in case of the Blood Angels, Golden Boys with Jump Packs, and other than that, we have one Battle Line unit or two, 10 Assault Intercessors, which you can run as one 10 man squad or two 5 man squad. And other than this, it contains two of the old primaries upgrade sprues for Blood Angels. It can come in handy, but it's not necessary to use them. What is the value of this kit? 162 pounds or 205 euros or 258 dollars. That's kinda nice and it's a good deal. Okay, so let's check out the content. First of all, they are Space Marines and every Space Marine unit and detachment has a rule that is common between them. And this rule is the Oath of Moment. Space Marines are making oath to the Emperor or even just to their chapters. The thing is, at the start of your command phase, pick one enemy unit. That will be your oath target. You take an oath that you will defeat that foe. So, when you are making an attack against that target, you can reroll all of the hit rolls, either by shooting or in melee, so you will be more reliably hitting them. And that's amazing. That's it for the universal rules. Let's check out this box set. First, let's start with our hero option. Blood Angels Captain. One model for 75 points. He is your hero, and as far as heroes goes, he is one of the best. Let's check out what he can do. He is able to choose between Two kinds of shooting weapons. First one is a heavy bolt pistol. It's a pistol, so you can shoot it even if you are in melee. It has the range of 18, with one attack, hitting on a 2+, plus, with the strength of 4, 1 point of armor penetration, and damage 1. It's an okay and reliable pistol, with a somewhat long range, nothing to rave about, it's okay. Or you have the other option. Inferno pistol. This pistol is also a pistol, so you can shoot it in melee. But other than that, it has an interesting rule. Melta 2, which means if you are shooting at a target within half range, you can add 2 to the damage that you cause. And that can come in handy. However, this weapon has a drawback. Its range is really, really short. It has a range of 6, with one attack hitting on a 2+, plus, with the strength of 8, and with an amazing 4 points of armor penetration, and damage d3, so damage between 1 and 3. But remember, if you are within half range, then it's damage between 3 and 5, so it can pack a punch. And enemies without invulnerable saves will not really make a saving throw against this one. Ok, other than these pistols, the captain is able to choose between 3 melee weapons. The first one, Mastercrafted Chainsword. With this, your captain will have an amazing 7 attacks, hitting on a 2+, plus, with the strength of 4, 1 points of armor penetration and damage 2. With this, you can cause a lot of damage, however, these attacks has low strength and low points of armor penetration, so usually this weapon is not ideal against big tough foes. It's maybe just good at killing chaff, for example Thermogons, Hormogons, Guardsman, Gretchen, and things like that. Let's check out your other option, Relic Weapon. With this weapon, you can make 6 attacks, Hitting on a 2+, plus, with the strength of 5, 2 points of armor penetration and damage 2. Usually, this is the weapon that you want. This weapon is good against space marines, heavily armored targets and still have a lot of attacks. It's nice. But, if you want to hit tougher targets, you have the option of the power fist. With the power fist, you have 5 attacks, hitting on a 2+, plus, with the strength of 8, 2 points of armor penetration and damage 2. While this weapon has fewer attacks, it has the strength of 8, so it can hurt smaller vehicles with relative ease or reliably. But also, you can wound space marines on a 2+. plus. So when you are fighting against space marines, chaos space marines, orcs, this weapon is the easiest choice if you want to be in melee. Ok, but what else can our captain do? 
Defensive wise, he has a 4 plus invulnerable save, and that's just great. But he has two amazing abilities. First one, Rights of Battle. Once per battle round, one unit with disability, so one captain can use disability, and he can reduce the command point cost of a stratagem by one. So basically, it's a free stratagem for him or his unit. That's great. And the other ability, Finest Tower. Once per battle, at the start of the fight phase, you can say this is the captain's finest tower. And when you say this, you can make 3 extra attack. And his weapon gains the amazing devastating wounds ability. Which means every time when you roll a 6 to wound, the damage just goes straight through. No armor saves and no invulnerable saves can be made against it. If you roll well at the finest tower, that can change your game. All in all, all of its weapon options good. The only thing that you have to think about, if you don't want him to be in melee, then pick the heavy bolt pistol. If you want him to be in melee, pick the Inferno Pistol. Heavy Bolt Pistol is okay to help out with one shot here and there. I'm not saying it's great, but once my captain took down the last wound of a Bloodthirster and it helped a lot. But on the other hand, if you are in melee, you can snipe out a Terminator or even a character if you are lucky with the Inferno Pistol. So pick your poison. Okay, let's check out the other unit. Assault Intercessors. I grew to love this unit. All in all, they are seem basic. Space Marines with chainsaws and bolt pistols. And sometimes that's just enough. But in this case we can sprinkle in some shock assault ferocity. And that makes things even better. The unit is equipped with Astartes chain swords and heavy bolt pistols. That's great. Let's check out these. Heavy bolt pistol. It's a pistol with the range of 18, one shot hitting on a 3 plus with the strength of 4, 1 points of armor penetration and damage 1. Astartes chain sword. This weapon has 4 attacks hitting on a 3 plus, with the strength of 4, 1 point of armor penetration, and damage 1. All in all, it's great fun, they can threat many infantry units, but not really great against tanks or big monsters. However, you can give special weapons to your sergeant, to the unit leader, which can make him a real threat. Let's check out these. First of all, you can give him a plasma pistol. Since it's plasma, it has two kind of shots. The first one, standard. With this, he has the range of 12. One shot, hitting on a 3 plus, with the strength of 7, two points of armor penetration, and damage one. It's a stronger pistol with a shorter range. That's nice. However, if you need to deal a little more damage in shooting, you can supercharge your plasma pistol. In this case, it will be stronger. However, it will become hazardous. First of all, let's check out the supercharged profile. With this one, it will have the range of 12, one shot hitting on a 3 plus, with the strength of 8, 3 points of armor penetration and damage 2. So that's nice. However, as I mentioned it became hazardous, which means after you shoot with it, you roll 1d6. And if you roll a 1, well, then the plasma pistol blows up and kills your sergeant. Ok, and your last option, Hand Flamer. This weapon is interesting, let's check out why. It has many rows. First of all, this is also a pistol. It is torrent, so it is automatically hitting the target. And also, it has the Ignore cover that can come in handy in some cases. It has the range of 12. It has D6 attacks, so between 1 and 6, kinda swingy. It has a strength of 3, 0 points of armor penetration and damage 1, automatically hitting but weaker. I'm not saying it's bad, I'm not saying it's good, it's a different kind of weapon. Ok, so you can choose between these or the trusty reliable heavy bolt pistol for your sergeant. But let's check out the melee weapons that he can choose from. He can choose the normal Astartes chainsword or he can pick up a power weapon. With this one he has 4 attacks, hitting on a 3+, plus, with a strength of 5, 2 points of armor penetration and damage 1. This is nice, there is no reason to not pick up the power weapon. You will have the same number of attacks and everything but with better strength and armor penetration. So pick up the power weapon. However, if you want to hit big, you have two options. One of them is the power fist. With this one, your sergeant will have 3 attacks, hitting on a 3+, plus, with the strength of 8, 2 points of armor penetration and damage 2. So stronger, reliable, but less attack. Or if you like to roll dice, you have the option of Thunder Hammer. This weapon has the rules of devastating wounds, which means if you roll a wound roll of 6, the damage goes straight through. No armor or invulnerable saves, just as before. So nice. However, it has a drawback. With this weapon, you have 3 attacks, but hitting only on a 4 plus. So the hitting is less reliable. It has the strength of 8, 2 points of armor penetration and damage 2. All in all, the Power Fist or the Power Weapon are the best options. 
However, the Thunder Hammer can be great, or can totally whiff. It's swingy. But other than these weapons, let's check out their rule. Shock Assault. Each time, when a model from this unit targets an enemy unit, you can reroll the wound rolls of one. That's nice. However, if the enemy unit that you are targeting is on an objective marker, you can reroll all wound rolls. And that is terrifying. If you are targeting your auto foment target and that unit is on an objective, you can reroll all hit and all wound rolls. And that, and that can be devastating. Nice unit, in my opinion. However, later you will have to find the delivery system for them, when you are building a greater army. Ok, and let's check out the last unit. Sanguinary Guards. Well, these guys are the elite of the elite. They have jump packs and amazing weaponry. Let's check out this. First of all, since they have jump pack, they move twice as much as your other guys. So yeah, they are fast. Let's check out their shooting weapons first. Angelus Bolt Gun. Well, technically it's a pistol, which has the range of 12, with 2 attacks, hitting on a 3+, plus, with the strength of 4, 0 points of armor penetration, and damage 1. It's ok. One model from the unit can upgrade this weapon into an Inferno pistol, which is the same as in case of the Captain. A one-shot pistol with the melt to 2 rule, so if the enemy is within half range you can add 2 to the damage characteristic, however it has the range of 6, with 1 attack, hitting on a 3+, plus with the strength of 8, 4 points of armor penetration, and damage d3. But the shooting weapon is not the reason why you bring these guys. Why you bring these guys? Because of their melee. They are a beast in melee. Let's check out their weapons. First one, the Encarmite Blade. This weapon has 4 attacks, hitting on a 3+, plus with the strength of 6, 3 points of armor penetration, and damage 2. It has lots of attacks, with the strength of 6, so they wound infantry with relative ease and they have chance against vehicles or monsters. 3 points of armor penetration is just chef's kiss. Let's check out the other weapon option, the competitor, Encarmite Spear. This weapon has the ability of Lance, which means when you are charging you can add one to your wound rolls. So in case of a charge you wound more reliably. However, this weapon only has 3 attacks, hitting on a 3+, plus with the strength of 6, 2 points of armor penetration and damage 2. Usually the consensus is that the blades are better, the spear is also a great option, but against different targets. If you are going to hunt for something big, use the lance, if you want to hunt something smaller, use the blade. That's it. Let's check out their special rules. Special rules wise, they have a 4 plus invulnerable save and a 2 plus armor save, so they are kind of tanky. And also they have more wounds than your normal space marines, so they are much harder to kill. But let's check out their other rules. They have the ability of deep strike, which means they can come in later to places on the board that are not in your deployment zone. So basically imagine they are coming down from the sky and looking for the perfect spot to land, and after that attack the enemy. This deep strike has some restrictions, but the most important that you have to know, when you arrive, you have to be more than 9 inches away from the enemy. So the charges are not guaranteed after you come in. Let's check out their other rules. First one, Angelic Visage. Each time when a melee attack targets this unit, you have to subtract one from the hit roll. So they are much harder to hit in melee. Other than that, they have the ability Airs of Ascalon, which means while the character is leading this unit, each time when a melee attack targets this unit, you have to subtract one from their wound rolls. So if there is a character with them, they are much harder to wound. Ok, when you check out this two option, we will know that these guys are want to be in melee and want to be led by a character. That is their happy place. Ok, but one last thing to note. They have a war gear ability. Sanguinary banner. So there will be one model in your unit that will be your banner bearer. Which means, while that model is alive, you can add one to the objective control characteristics of the models in the unit. So keep alive the banner and it will be much easier to take objectives from your opponent. That's a cool stuff. Opinions of this box set. It has a great saving. Also, it has great units inside of the kit. It's a little bit disappointing that they didn't give the new upgrade sprue, they gave the old one, but it is what it is. All in all, it's a great box set. However, this one is only good for Blood Angels, while the old Blood Angels one was a generalist best pick. I'm not sad, it's good to see that G-dubs at least somewhat interested in these non-codex compliant chapters. It's nice. The new Sanguinary Guard, well, kinda a bit lackluster in my opinion as far as their looks go. However, G-dubs 
wrote an article about they will do something with that one. Put wings on them, release an upgrade sprue, or stuff like that. So, we will have to see that. Cool box set, cool units, everything is great. It will not replace the old one, as far as top pick for, for every Space Marine starter. But still, it's good for Blood Angels. It's still an 8 out of 10. Maybe it can be a little bit better, however you have to have a jump pack captain or Dante to be able to use the Sanguinary Guard to their full extent. They are strong on their own, but when they led by a character, they are just indestructible beasts. So that's that. But that's it for now. Thank you for watching and listening. If you like what I do, please consider liking, subscribing, or both, or even hit the little bell to not miss out any new content. I hope I see you in the next one. Until then, paint your models. See ya!